Hey, what's going on guys? Christian Hanna Horror here today. I'm very excited to talk to you about Scream Factory's new release of Alone in the Dark. And before we get into the review of this movie, let me give you the tiniest plot synopsis for those that have not seen or even maybe heard of this film. At a secluded mental institution, electricity fuels this high-tech security system that keeps the nearby neighborhood safe from these patients. When Dr. Bain gets the help from a new therapist at the hospital. The patients don't take kindly to it. They immediately don't like him. Not only that, the security system here is only powered by electricity. So if the electricity goes out in the mental ward, these patients can get out as easy as one, two, three. So Alone in the Dark, you know, right off the bat, I want to say, like, this was a movie that was elusive for a long time. I don't even think it made the jump to DVD. It could be wrong on that. If it did, it was very limited. But, but the bottom line is Alone in the Dark is a movie a lot of people have wanted to see for quite some time. And when Scream Factory announced that they were putting this movie out, I pre-ordered it faster than a 747 taking off. I was so excited to own Alone in the Dark. This is a movie that I first heard about, quite frankly, when I was watching a Nightmare on Elm Street documentary. I think it was Never Sleep Again, and it got brought up. Uh, because of Jack Shoulder directing this. So in enthralled to see this movie. I'd done research about this movie. I'd learned about this movie as much as I can. Knowing that Jack Palance was in here was really interesting to me because I'm a big Jack Palance fan. He's a really great actor. And of course, Donald Pleasance being in here is something that I'm always excited to see. Alone in the Dark was, was very high on my priority list because it's also a slasher film. But it's not really just a on-the-nose slasher film. Alone in the Dark has some different kind of elements going on to it. And I really enjoyed a lot of things about this film. So right off the bat, I will say that the movie in my head, the movie in my head was so amazing, it was bewildering how good the slasher was. It was the greatest slasher on earth in my head before I saw it. And because of that, I almost walked out of Alone in the Dark thinking to myself, huh. But I immediately was like, let me give this a few hours and watch it again and, and just try to really sink my teeth into the film that I saw. And I did like Alone in the Dark. I thought it was a pretty good slasher film. I really liked some of the odd elements that this film had. Characters like Jack Palance, who took a really different turn in a slasher film, being the quote-unquote villain in this movie along with others, but Jack Palance actually not being... A killer. Very interesting turns in this movie that I liked. Alone in the Dark also has a funny Dr. Loomis almost. It's like a doctor that Donald Pleasance plays, but he's like the nice, fun doctor. Take take the character of Dr. Loomis and almost flip him upside down and saying, these guys are fine. What are you worrying about? They're cool. They're just there. You got to be understood more. These guys are they're human beings. They're, they're, you just gotta you have to work with them. You have to understand the way they work. So it was cool seeing Dr. Lumas be almost the antithesis to what he was in like a Halloween with his character. Some of the scenes in here got really suspenseful. You know, as we said, there's the new therapist and his family comes into town. They're staying at this house. He's got his wife, he's got his daughter. And at one point in the film, the electricity goes out in this town and the patients are able to just completely escape. And there's one of them that goes to the therapist's house that moved into the town and says, hey, I'm here to babysit you. Your dad sent me here. At that point, I was petrified because I was like, this isn't good. And it really built up some great suspense. So Alone in the Dark, I, I really like this movie a lot now after I watched it twice because what I thought the movie was, it was not when I watched it. But I was like, let me, let me sink my teeth into this again. So I watched the movie twice in one day. <laughs> and by the second time, I was like, you know, this was different. This was not your necessarily just on-the-nose slasher. And I liked a lot of the elements that Alone in the Dark had. One of the things I really liked was the score. The score for the movie was really great. It was done by an Italian gentleman. And there were some really nice pieces in here. It really set this kind of, you know, almost moody tone that really just helped the film a lot. The score was a really pivotal piece of this movie, I thought. Very, very, very good was the score in the movie. Loved it a lot. And they mentioned earlier that this is a Jack Shoulder movie. And I'm becoming an even bigger Jack Shoulder fan. Like, I really thought this movie was well made. It was well edited. It was well done. Nothing but love for Alone in the Dark now. I would give this film a solid 6 out of 10. It's not necessarily an on-the-nose slasher film, though. So, knowing that, if you can go in knowing that, uh, you can alleviate some of those, those preconceived notions that you may have that I did. Uh, but it's definitely a movie I, I want to revisit again. It was very it was very fun revisiting it the second time, knowing what I had already seen, and being able to sink my teeth into it and relax into it, and really cool moments like that. So I, I really liked I really liked Alone in the Dark by the second time, and it was a really interesting film. There are some really trippy scenes in this movie. The opening is definitely you know a, a very trippy scene in the beginning. 
There are great characters that are in the psych ward. One of the ones that you're going to really, you know, take a uh, notice to is one called The Preacher. Now, he is pretty wild in this film. He's pretty creepy. And he's the one that has this lucid dream in the beginning of the film with, with, with Donald Pleasance in it that's really creepy and very reminiscent of the movie Terrifier. So if you've seen Terrifier, you'll know what I mean when you see the opening scene. So some great visuals and stuff. Jack Shoulder did a great job with this movie. In terms of this Blu-ray release, I gotta say that they did a great job on it. This Blu-ray release is fantastic, and I'll tell you one reason to own this above anything else. So Screen Factory put this out. Of course, you can reverse the art and have that classic poster art on the front. Um, one thing that's so great about this is the special features. They have, first of all, it's a new 2K scan from the movie, and the picture quality was really good. I mean, it was, it looked great. It looked great. So seeing this film and this, this look this good was amazing. I mean, they did a great job. You'll never have to upgrade this movie again as far as I'm concerned. This interview with director Jack Shoulder was like an hour long, and he really goes over everything in his career up until this point and afterwards and making the film and dealing with the film and his memory is fantastic so shoulder gets a lot of brownie points for actually being able to remember stuff tell a story well be very honest with the audience that he's talking to the interview with jack shoulder in here is so great that alone is makes this blu-ray worth it not only that, it looks like Scream Factory got better filming equipment or whoever they hired and outsourced to do this because the the, the, the interview looks amazing. The cameras that they used to interview him, I mean, we, we, it looks like million-dollar cameras. I mean, visually, it looked amazing. So I was shocked by that because I understand with what would happen with the pandemic before we were getting Skype interviews on some of the releases like Ghost Ship and stuff, and I was fine. But I remember before then seeing... A lot of the special features, everything looked good, but whatever kind of equipment they got for to, to film these interviews now, it was amazing. So the interview with Jack Shoulder by itself is worth the price of admission. It is long, it is hearty, and it is chock full of great information. Uh, you also get an audio commentary with Jack Shoulder, an interview with, with actress Carol Levy. She was great. An interview with the underground New York punk fa uh, band, The Sick Fs. Uh... <laughs> And author Adam Rockoff, the band that you see in the movie, they're in here and they do interviews and they're great and they're still rocking. It was really cool. Overall, this is a great release. It's one of my favorite releases so far this year. Alone in the Dark, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. I had massive preconceived notions of what this film was going to be, building it up in my head for so long, and it wasn't that. So if you can go in not having that initial reaction that you think you were going to have the way I did and just let go and know that this is going to be a little bit different, I think you'll enjoy this film. It's not the greatest slasher ever, but it's far from the worst, and it's certainly one that a slasher movie fan can have in their collection and revisit numerous times. It's a great fun movie, it's a great fun slasher film, but it's not really just an on-the-nose slasher film. Keeping that in mind, I hope you guys will check out Alone in the Dark and give it a shot. It's a great addition to my Blu-ray collection. I'm so glad to have this from Scream Factory. Uh, I was hoping this was going to finally get a release one day, and it did. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is Alone in the Dark, the new Blu-ray release from Scream Factory. We'll see you guys next time.